I'm going to talk about the testing standards and then go briefly into some certification programs as well. I'll start with the ASTM standard, um, American Society for Testing and Materials, and then where appropriate, I'll list the ISO equivalents. ISO is the international organization for standardization. While the American standards are developed in the US, the ISO standards mostly developed in Europe. They're mostly equivalent with some few technical differences. And then next I'll go into briefly some molded standards, mainly the automotive, flammability, and then the certification program. Large list of ASTM standards. Um, the first one though is, is the main um, standard for flexible foam, ASTM D3574. All flexible foam is tested according to this standard. The rest of them, although still equally important, are more application dependent. ASTM D3574, you can see the standard is made up of, of several tasks. You have density, hardness, um, compression set, tensile, tear, airflow, uh, resilience, uh, several fatigue tests, um, some aging tests, a recovery test for visco, and a creep test. We'll start with, with density, which is test A in ASTM D3574. Density is pretty straightforward. It's the measure of the mass of the sample divided by the volume of the sample. And density can be measured by hand or by laser measuring devices. And again, the ISO equivalent is 845. We're all similar. There are some technical differences. Next are the hardness tests, which is uh, the force deflection test. The first one is indentation force deflection. Here you take, using an electromechanical universal testing machine, you use a 8-inch indenter, and then you compress or you deflect the foam to a uh, certain uh, deflection. Most common ones are 25%, 65%, and 25% return. And then these values um, are used to measure or calculate support factor and percent recovery. Support factor, which is also a comfort measurement, is the ratio of the 65% deflection divided by the 25%. Moving down to the bottom, the indentation residual gauge length. This is um, very similar to the IFD test. But instead of a specified thickness deflection, they deflect it, uh, it's a force deflection, and then they measure a thickness. Um, some common deflections there are, are 4.5 newtons, 110 newtons, and 220 newtons. And then we go back to the CFE, which is the compression force deflection, which is the stress needed to fully compress the foam block to some deflection. The stress is measured after one minute of dwell. As you can see, the IFD is actually an indentation, it does, so you get some edge effects, while the CFD is a compression of the entire foam sample. So again, here, IFD is thickness dependent, while CFD is independent of thickness. The next test is, is compression set. This is where a sample is compressed between two metal plates to a certain deflection. This could be either 50%, 75%, or 90%, and in these conditions, there's a specified condition for 22 hours. And those conditions can be either ambient or at some age, um, either wet age, humid age, or heat age. Um, after removal, the uh, samples are allowed to recover for 30 minutes, and they calculate the thickness law. Next is tensile and elongation. This is tensile is a stress required to pull the foam apart. Elongation is a measure of how much the foam stretches. And here, you've got your tensile bar, and then using the same electromechanical um, universal testing machine, you put it in two grippers, and then at a certain rate, the foam is samples pulled apart. The tear is a force required to propagate a tear divided by the sample thickness. Again, here's the sample. As you see, this is a propagation. You, you put a little cut about one and a half inches into one end of the sample, and then using the testing device, um, it measures the force to propagate that tear. Next up is airflow. This is the measurement of the openness of the porosity of the foam. 
this, pro pro this property has a significant impact on performance property, such as compression set, fatigue, and flammability. Resilience, also referred to as ball rebound, is the resilience of a flexible foam measured by dropping a steel ball and, vis and visually measuring the rebound height. The next are the fatigue tests. Uh, the first one is the static fatigue, which are large samples compressed 75% and held for 22 hours. After a 30 minute recovery loss, thickness and IFD are measured. The second fatigue test is roller shear. This is an 18 inch offset roller imparting a 30 pound load. So it rolls 20,000 times at 60, 000, or 60 cycles per minute. After one hour, again, loss of thickness and IFD are measured. Most common fatigue test is probably pounding, or you're also referred to as, as ISO pounding. And this is here, where you take a 10 inch indenter weighing 168 pounds, and you drop it on a piece of foam 80,000 times at a rate of 70 cycles per minute. After a one hour recovery, the loss of thickness and IFD are measured. And the last fatigue is, is caster, and this is for carpet cushion. You have a six inch diameter, six inch wide roller with a 60 pound loading, where it goes through 40,000 cycles at 60 cycles per minute. You measure the loss of thickness and the CFD retention. And then they also specify some aging conditions. Um, you have steam autoclave, where you have either J1 or J2. J1 is three hours at 220 degrees Fahrenheit. J2 is five hours at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the typical properties evaluated are CFD and compression set. You have dry heat aging, which is 22 hours at 284 degrees Fahrenheit. Typical properties evaluated is tensile strength. Then you have wet heat, wet heat aging. 22 hours at 122 Fahrenheit and 95% relative humidity. Typical properties of value here are compression set. Recovery, this is for viscoelastic foam. Um, it's similar to the IFD setup. The sample is rapidly indented to 75% and held for one minute. And then you rapidly reduce the load or release the load and then the foam is, is uh, timed um, for recovery. And finally, there's a peak test. This is a measure of the change in thickness as a function of time at a constant loading. Particularly important for packaging and visible elastic foam. Now we're going to move into some other um, ASTM standards. Uh, the first one is, is dynamic mechanical thermal analysis. This is a tool used to analyze polymer structure thermal behavior. This is where the TG can be determined from produced plots. Um, you have three curves. This is the output. Uh, the first one is uh, E prime, which is the storage model modulus. Then you have E double prime, which is the loss modulus. And then the red would, would be your uh, pan delta, which is the ratio of the loss modulus to the storage modulus. And where these peaks are, are your glass transition temperatures. And, in, and it is possible to have multiple TGs. The second test is, is thermal gravimetric analysis. This is a tool used to analyze weight loss at a specific temperature by heating a sample in a small furnace. This is for uh, measuring thermal degradation. And the third one is differential scanning calorimetry. This is a tool used to measure the heat flow to a sample, used to study kinetics associated with crystalline exotherm and or melting endotherm. And again, this is equipment here. This is for a DMCA or DMA, PGA, and DSP. Again, some of the ASTM D624 is the grave stair, or also known as the die C. And the die C is just the the die used to cut the sample. This sample. Um, and this is the force required to initiate a tear divided by the sample thickness. Unlike the ASTM, ASTM tear strength, which is propagating the tear, 
this is a test to initiate a tear. And then ASTMD 737 is Frazier airflow. This is a measure of the air permeability of low permeable foam. Um, test is sensitive to thickness variations. Again, this one is this test is used for airflows or low airflows that are outside the uh, airflow test of the D3574. D4060 is paper abrasion. Samples are abraded with wheels made of varying grit or hardness. Weight loss is reported. And this is a sample picture there. Um, IZOT impact is a pendulum impact test for foam and solid plastic. And then lastly here we have the ASTM Z154, which is for QUV test. Um, the exposure of samples to UV light, temperature, and humidity is carried out. Samples are then evaluated for color change and property loss. ASTM D257, surface and volume resistivity. This is used to measure anti-static or conductive properties, particularly important for two soles and anti-static mats. ASTM D2240 is a barometer hardness. This is a small handheld instrument with varying tips and force ranges for determining surface hardness. E228 is the coefficient of linear thermal expansion. This is a measure of the linear thermal expansion of materials using vitreous silica silicometer. Apply uh, adhesion is a 180 degree peel test measure for the adhesion force down here. And then you have the pull off adhesion where you take a whole saw cut are made through a top layer and small aluminum dollies are glued over the hole. And the dollies are then pulled off with a hydraulic or ratcheting device to measure the adhesion. An example here. Here on D1052 is Ross Flex. This is a cold temperature flexing for two sole materials. D1596 is a drop tower. It's a flat plate weight or curved weighted forms are dropped from various heights and measure the deacceleration. Um, packaging foam with also uh, headrest and um, headliner composites are measured in use. Yeah. 1894 coefficient of friction is a measure of the frictional forces between two materials. The last will also apply to the automotive. Um, the first one is E1050, a sound absorption measurement for carpet underlay. And this is a measure of sound absorption using impedance tubes of varying hertz. And then E756 is vibration dampening measurement. This is a measure of the vibration damping properties of the material. Next are molded standards. Most molded standards also um, are tested to D3574. But they also require some other testing as well, especially for automotive. Um, I can't do it justice in this short time here, but in fogging and VOCs is absolutely critical. And then also for automotive seating, you also have the vibration dampening. <coughs> fogging is the collection of the volatile material coming off a hot sample to a cooled glass plate. The mass of the volatiles on the glass plate is measured, and formation of droplets or crystals on the glass plate can constitute an automatic failure. Next we'll go into the flammability standards. And here most of these standards are, are either in federal or you have your state California technical bulletin. And, and the flammability tests are application dependent. You have the mattress test, you have the mattress, um, furniture, Automotive, and then this is a British standard, which is also a furniture test. Um, and these standards also either apply to the component test, which is the foam only, or they can be composite tests, which is all the full, full furniture. Either on a small or a large scale. First test of them go through are the Consumer Product Safety Commission test. And then you got the nomenclature 16 CFR 1632 and 1633. 
The 16 is, is Title 16, CFR um, stands for Code of uh, Federal Regulation, and then you got Part 1632 and Part 1633. 1632 is a cigarette smolder test, and this applies to the mattress, mattress pad, or the picking material. 1633 is an open flame spinal body requirement, and this is a measure on the full mattress set. Next is the California Technical Bowl from 117, which applies to residential furniture. This is a, here you make a, we call it a mini couch, where you light a cigarette and place it into the steam, right here. And, and then the foam is, is, is measured, does it ignite? And if it ignites, it's an automatic failure. And then they measure, um, once the cigarette completely burns out, you measure the amount of time that the foam still smolders, and it has to be less than 45 minutes. And then they also measure the vertical char length, and from either side of the cigarette, either side of the cigarette, top and bottom has to be less than one and a half inches to pass. And they do this three times. Technical bulletin 133. Uh, this is a composite test, and this is for um, furniture in uh, public occupancies, such as jails, prisons, nursing homes, uh, hotels and motels. And this is where they light the newsprint, and then they measure the temperature on the ceiling of the burn room, temperature at four feet, smoke opacity, carbon monoxide concentration, and weight loss. And you can also use uh, oxygen consumption accelerometry. Again, these, there's a couple more uh, California technical bulletins for, for mattresses. TV-121 and TV-129. TV-121 is a flammability test for mattresses for high, again, high risk occupancy. Again, jails, um, prisons. Um, this is a composite test. And they monitor weight loss, temperature above the mattress, and carbon monoxide concentration. TV-129 is also for public buildings, but these are for the less risk, like hotels and motels. Um, again, it's a composite test, and they monitor peak and total heat relief, peak rate of smoke relief, total amount of smoke relief, and weight loss. Then you have the automotive test, Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standard 302. This is a flammability of materials in the occupant compartments of motor vehicles. This is a standard measures the burn rate of materials. Uh, the foam sample is 4 by 14 by half inch thick. Uh, it's supported in a U-shaped frame, exposing the foam area of 2 by 13 inches. The foam and burner are enclosed in a specific chamber, and the burn rate is determined by, by the timing between marks on the, on the foam. And lastly, we have the, a British standard, 5852. This is another furniture standard, um, but instead of a cigarette, they use a ignition source 5, also referred to as a crib 5. A uh, crib 5 is a framework of 20 dry sticks. Uh, the dry sticks are wetted with 1.4 milli milliliters of isopropyl alcohol. And then the crib is centrally placed at the intersection of the back and bottom portion of, of the seat shown here. And the total weight loss of both samples has to be less than 60 grams. And then finally, briefly, we're going to talk about some certification programs. The first one is Certipure US. And these are for polyurethane foam and the furniture and bedding. And the foam must, be, must meet requirements set out by the program in order to have the foam certified. And in the past, they have to be made without ozone depleters, without the Chris family of flame retardants, uh, made with, without mercury, lead, and heavy metals, uh, made without formaldehyde, made without phthal the phthalates, regulated by the Consumer Product Safety Commission, and they have to be low VOC emissions for indoor air quality. The second one is the Green Label Plus. This is a service certification program for carpet, ad adhesive, and cushion. It ensures that customers are purchasing the lowest emitting carpet, adhesive, and cushion products on the market. The program meets and exceeds California's indoor air quality standards 
the low emitting products using commercial settings. 